recruiting in excess. So what I mean by that is, is when you're building your business or if you're building an insurance team or even if you're trying to hire an assistant for yourself to help you, anytime you do this, you want to make sure that you're recruiting more people than you think you really need to or more people than what you need. So there's a few different reasons for that. I'll give an example with an, from an assistant standpoint, right? My assistant right now, she's awesome. She's really, really good. But I've had to go through a few people to find that, okay? Because what, what happened with me is you get people, they start, they're doing really, really well, and then kind of it, it dips down. And I had one at a time. So when you do that one at a time, what happens is if you have one person not doing something properly or as it should be, the job's kind of not getting done at all, right? So it's actually more expensive to have a couple people, to have one person on payroll not doing their job properly than it is to get three people on payroll, two of them probably won't do it properly or they may have something come up in their life, right? <laughs> Maybe uh, they have to move or a woman gets pregnant, has a kid, and it's like, hey, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna do this anymore. Or they get a new job, right? So you wanna have a few extra, right? I would hire like two or three, and then within a couple weeks, you'll see who is like the best pick out of all of them, okay? So that's what I mean by recruit and access from an assistant standpoint. Then also too, if you're like super high up in a company and you have an executive assistant and, and he or she is like top notch performer, What's gonna happen after a couple years of them doing that? Well, they're gonna now have on their resume that they work for you, right? So then they can take that and go somewhere else and work for some Fortune 500 company that can probably afford to pay them more than you, right? Or, or maybe willing to pay them more than you. Um, also, what I mean by that, too, uh, that gets to, to this where you wanna overpay someone a little bit if they're doing the job right because it's more expensive to pay someone exactly what they're doing for or to underpay them and have them leave and to try to find someone else and retrain them and go through the whole thing again than it is to just like pay someone a little bit extra and have them stick around and do that and, and to keep the job going. So if you're looking for an assistant, that's, how, that's where you over recruit in that aspect. When it comes to insurance agents or a, sale, a sales team, it's the same thing. So I made the mistake of like way, way over recruiting to where I had so many people start that I didn't have a system in place that could handle that many people flowing in. So you don't want to like over recruit so that you have so many people. It depends how your system's set up, but the way our system is, is that there's an expense and there's expenses involved with each agent. So we want to make sure that those people can get producing properly. And regardless of how good or talented someone is, everyone has to be trained. Everyone has to be, uh, has to learn the ins and out of the business. And in sales, not only do they have to learn sales, but they have to learn the product knowledge as well. Okay, so when you're, if you're recruiting for insurance agents, you wanna make sure that you're recruiting extra than what you think that you may need. Not too much, but extra from what you think you may need because you're gonna have people who you think are gonna do really, really well. If you put all your eggs in one basket, then, and, and that basket leaves and you don't have any eggs anymore. So if you have a few people starting at a time, it's, you see pretty quickly who is the person that you wanna put the time into. And you wanna make sure that you're hiring people that are willing to do the job, right? And not un, and what I mean by that is there's unwilling people, and you're gonna, you're gonna see what I mean when I say this, but unwilling is someone who's like, I don't wanna do that, I, I can't do that, that can't be done, um, and they either say it or they, they dramatize it, they act it out. All right, so that's why I love in recruiting to just give someone like one or two assignments to do before we move forward through the interview process because if someone's unwilling to do what you, what you want, then they may not be that serious about the position and, and they may not be someone that you wanna have on board with you, okay? And it's not from like a tyrannical standpoint where you wanna just be telling people what to do all day, but it's like, hey, if, if this has to be done, you wanna make sure that someone does it and takes care of it. So. Um, a, don't you can't confuse willing people though with people who uh, may have a different personality than you. So that's another big point too. Is that w just because someone may have a different personality, um, that does not mean that they're they're not willing to do the work. All right. So if you bring on say three, four, or five people, you want to apply the eighty twenty rule. And what I mean by that is you want to put eighty percent of your time into the twenty percent of people that are really putting the most effort in as a new agent because. You'll have new agents that'll start who are super talented, but they just don't work. 
lazy, right? You can't really do it. There's not much you can do about that. You're better off training up the person who is putting in the effort, putting in the time and has a good attitude and getting them, because like you can't, attitude's hard to teach, right? But skills are something that are more easily teachable. Not everyone will be able to learn it. Uh, not everyone's gonna be successful at it, but you wanna make sure that you are teaching people who are willing to apply it and put the work in. So that's really what I mean with recruit and access. Now recruiting and training, however automated that you wanna do it, it's something that you still have to do every day. So recruiting is not something that, that is just done fully automated. I have a really good system where it's pretty automated, but I still have to reach out and talk to people and interview them once they've gone through the preliminary processes. In training as well, okay, I've learned the training. You can't just make a video course and expect everybody to be like the best of the best of the best when it comes to sales. If you do have video courses, you have to actually train and discuss and make sure that the knowledge that's being taught in the training course is applied, okay? And it's okay to go through training a few times. It's like if you read a book more than once, you're gonna learn something else and it may impact you differently the second, third, fourth, fifth time around. All right, so that's really uh, the basis of this, of recruit and access, and make sure you're involved in it. Make sure you're recruiting more people than you think you may need, and then from there you have a point where you can select the people who you really wanna put your time and energy into.